everybody and welcome to the horror tree youtube channel where today i am joined by tiffany angus and val nolan the uh wonderful writers behind a brand new book just out this week called spec fic for newbies so we are here to talk all things spec fic or speculative fiction for the uninitiated uh welcome tiffany and val glad to have you with us thank you so much I'm delighted to be here thank you right. so just to set the scene, uh, I'm going to ask you both to introduce yourselves and tell tell everybody who you are and why you came to this project. So just because you're at the left of my screen, Tiffany, can I ask you to go first? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Tiffany Angus. Um, I'm an ex-academic. I spent over 10 years teaching creative writing and publishing at university um, in the U.S. And, and here in the U.K. where I live now. Um, half that time, I was a senior lecturer in creative writing and publishing. I was a course leader for an MA creative writing et cetera, et cetera. I have a PhD in creative writing. And my main focus was science fiction, fantasy, and horror writing. Uh, so I had all the nerds. It was great. I loved it. Uh, I'm also a published author. Uh, my debut, Threading the Labyrinth, which is historical fantasy, came out in 2020, just as we went into lockdown. Uh, but luckily, I was a finalist for the British Science Fiction Association and the British Fantasy Society's Best Novel Awards. Uh, I've written a lot of short fiction in a bunch of different subgenres. And spec fic for newbies is obviously the coolest, best new thing. Um, I'm also a co-director of the Underhill Academy for Science Fiction Fantasy Writers, which is a brand new online um, creative writing, teaching, learning site. Awesome. We will have to make sure we get some links to uh, pop along here as well. Uh, awesome. Thank you, Tiffany. And and Val, who are you? I, hi, I, uh, I'm Val Nolan. I am an academic. I teach creative writing and literature in Aberystwyth University for the past eight years I think and before that I thought in Ireland in Galway where I earned my PhD in contemporary literature. I am the author of the book Neil Jordan Works for the Page which is out from Cork University Press as well as academic articles in the likes of science fiction studies and foundation and journal of graphic novels and comic books, uh, Irish studies review, dictionary literary biography and so on and so forth uh, as well as uh, a lot of short fiction I have published short stories in Year's Best Science Fiction, Best of British Science Fiction, Inner Zone, uh, BSF Horizons, uh, The Future's Page of Nature. Uh, my story, The Irish Astronaut, was shortlisted for the Theodore Sturgeon Award. And I have been bringing all that all that background and approach to the teaching of science fiction, fantasy, comic books, horror uh, at third level for, for most of my teaching career, to be honest. And that is the type of the type of, of energy and the type of material that we have been bringing to Specfic for Newbies, which is, is sort of the next best thing to being in the classroom with myself and Tiffany. Awesome. So nicely just absolutely landed there. We, you did say uh, the, the book book title a couple of times, so Spec Fic for Newbies. Obviously got very great credentials in the academic world, the, the fan world, the writing world. Can you tell me a little bit more about how this book came to be? What made you want to write Spec Fic for Newbies? Uh, so when we were in lockdown in 2021, uh, EasterCon was online. EasterCon is a UK a science fiction fantasy convention that is a week from now. I'm very excited to go in a week. Um, so we were online and I taught a workshop about writing historical fantasy. And Francesca Barbini, who's the managing editor of Luna Press, caught the workshop and she said, hey, do you want to have lunch? And so we sat in our houses, she in Edinburgh and he, me here in East Anglia, eating our lunch with our little avatars on screen. Uh, and she said, your workshop was awesome. Do you want to write a book for us? And I thought, well, oh, oh okay, sure. You know, if I take how the workshop was set up and that structure of it, it'd be really fun to do that with a bunch of different subgenres. However, I don't write that many different subgenres, but Val Nolan and I met at Clarion in 2009 and we've been on panels together and we've basically been nerds together for, you know, a decade. And I immediately thought he's the perfect person to write it because we've both been teaching this stuff. We have a lot of material. Let's see what we can come up with. And so that's where we started. Mm. And so how was the collaboration process? You're both obviously in very different parts of the country here. Uh, how did you work together to bring it to, to life? 
we had we had many discussions first about what the shape of the book was going to be, and we had the we had the spine of it based on based on Tiffany's initial workshop. We got this the sense that yeah, we want to discuss the individual histories of these subgenres. We want to say that it's not just science fiction or it's not just horror, but there's there's these 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 very rich, intricate, very long histories of individual subgenres. Here we're like, what is the best way of of getting those across to people? What is the best way of saying it's like you're not going to learn just about fantasy now now you're going to learn about really intricate sort of detailed stuff. So we started to break down the structure. We started to look at, okay, we're going to need a history of stuff. We're going to need, we're going to need sort of, sort of, these are the typical manifestations of individual subgenres that a reader could come across. What are the different types of Gothic fantasy? What are the different types of body horror that you would typically see? We started to look at then, oh yeah, it's a writing guide as well. We need to make sure that we, we talk about the, we talk about the problems, we talk about the issues people could come across here. What are the, what are the potholes people typically find? And we have encountered those in the classroom many, many times. We've seen the students make mistakes. We've made the mistakes ourselves many times. We're like, yeah, these are the things we need to tell people about. We needed to put in things about how, this was cool, that's cool, these are our favorite books, these are our favorite movies and so on, these are things you need to see, eh, don't worry about those other things. And it was a kind of a back and forth with that. I would write a paragraph or I'd write a section, I'd send it to Tiffany, she did the same thing, she'd send it back. I would put in, what about all these really academic things? She'd be like, no, 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 this is way too long, take out some of those. We kind of just went back and forth that way. Tiff, yeah. if, I'm, if I'm misrepresenting this, please stop me. And you put in jokes that we unfortunately had to lose. I mean, oh. It still breaks our heart, so certain jokes that we had to lose. Um, and it, it has breaks my heart that my Backboy Street joke is gone from that book. I Yeah, it's going to go in something at some point. You'll bring it back. Because <laughs> yeah. some jokes, like, some jokes generationally wouldn't land, and some jokes we just kind of went a little bit too far, and so we had to rein it in. Um, but <laughs> each each of the subgenres, so each of the subgenres and major tropes, so some of these aren't necessarily subgenres, but something like zombies is kind of a subgenre now. So mm. zombies are in it and vampires. At the end of each of those sections, we also have activities, like two activities. So somebody who wants to try their hand at it can can try and see see what they come up with. Mm. Um, and a lot of puns. <laughs> so many puns, so many puns. But the activities and the things like that, again, those are based on our, our actual classroom experiences. Mm. Everything in the book is based on what we would actually do in the classroom. And to an extent, to an extent, it's a kind of a response to it's lockdown now. We're not in the classroom anymore. It's lockdown. It's we don't have students coming to our door to talk about these things. We're not meeting people in the hallways to discuss. Oh, yeah, you wrote that story. This is cool. This is kind of what worked. This is kind of what didn't work. Have you thought about doing this? What about doing that? This is where you can send it. This is what you can do with it at that point. And it, it's very much a response to those years of not interacting with the students in the same way anymore. And the book was a, a chance for us to say, yeah, actually, here, here it is. Here is the, the conversation that we want to be having right now mm. so it's clearly a very dry academic text then oh yeah, yeah absolutely. so boring yeah. Yeah. No, okay no. <laughs> <laughs> how have you clarified that <laughs> just like us because we're dry academic people oh I, I can tell i can tell i'm so heartbroken we couldn't have illustrations in it because val does drawings when he teaches and i used to do drawings and between us we would have like monster trucks and zombies on ships uh, on on cruise ships and uh, i don't know comic book frames like everything would have been on in the in the illustrations it, it, that could be your like instagram campaign or your pinterest <laughs> campaign or something that's a good idea yeah we might do that <laughs> <laughs> awesome so so that's the co-writing process it sounds like it, it is very much both of your every section you didn't necessarily say okay i'm going to do the sci-fi you can do the horror or anything like that you, it's a real collaborative effort yeah, we went back and forth a lot with this, and we went back and forth with several, several different drafts of different chapters at various points, and they got longer and they got shorter, and the stuff came <laughs> out and it went back in and it went out again, and it was got it was shorter. an awful lot of fun actually to do that. It was an awful lot of fun because you see your writing through someone else's eyes, and you see your writing through the eyes of someone you respect and someone you'd be like, yeah, I've known this person for ages now, and they know my writing, I know their writing, and it was it was that true kind of collaboration of you, you you trust the person if that makes sense. I know I could give something to Tiffany and she could rip it to shreds and I would believe her and if that makes sense I'd be like yeah actually you're right yeah I that, yeah. that needed to go or that yeah. needed to be fixed and vice versa yeah because yeah. <laughs> like we when we when we first came up with the table of contents we went through and we sort of called dibs on certain things mm. um because you know like Val's science fiction is much more please science fictiony science fiction you know he's <laughs> he, he does like the space stuff whereas I'm the apocalyptic time travel stuff 
science, mm. science fiction. And so we went through and like pick things that we thought, okay, this is actually mine. Mm. And a lot of it, we um, both wrote together because we both liked it so much. We didn't want to give it up. Mm. So like we both did zombies and we both got to do vampires, but even the things that we would individually do, it was still, okay, here, read this. What mm. can you add to it? What do I need to get rid of? What do I need to add? How many words do we have to cut off of it? Yes. Yeah. Which I know made him sad. It's okay. It's okay. I, I, I can get over it. I can get over it. Someday. That's for volume two. You know, you can just keep them aside. We're working on volume two right now. Oh, well, there you go. I was yeah. going to say, like, how could you possibly cover every single subgenre? You just can't. Yeah. No, no, you can't, unfortunately, which is which is why we kind of when we put together the, the table of contents for this book, which we'll, mm. we'll, we'll call volume one for a moment, uh, we kind of concentrated on what are the essentials? So what's, what's essential in horror? You need to have the gothic horror. You need to have vampires. You need to have zombies. What are like the key things? Mm. You needed to put some other stuff aside. Yeah, hello, volume two. How are you? You know, volume two, <laughs> entering the chat now, which yes, but what about? Um, so, and, 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 and there were some difficult choices to be made there, but you couldn't because we could talk about this stuff all day. We would prefer to be talking about this stuff all day rather than actually doing the work. But when we sat down to do the work, we realized, yeah, you know what? This needs to go. This needs to stay yeah. difficult. Hmm. Yeah. And I, I do I do want to talk about the subgenres because, they're, like I say, it's mind-blowing how many subgenres there are. But let's just st stick with the... <laughs> <laughs> let's stick with the the guide itself just for one one more thing um you know obviously there are loads of writing guides out there so what did you have in mind to make this one different as you developed it what makes this one unique this nobody's kind of done it this way before you know there are a lot of writing guides out there and there's some really good ones I have a whole shelf full of books about writing and there's some really good ones on science fiction and fantasy and horror but nobody's really approached it the way we did really grand granularly can I say that did I say that right yeah. so you know you get like kind of the big general look at a, a genre but nobody the stuff that we couldn't really do in class is the stuff that we got to do in this book, basically. Because mm. quite often we would have to talk about things broadly, like here's a history of fantasy, here's a history of science fiction. But we got to do that and say, oh, and let me nerd out for 2,000 words about big dumb objects or, you know, sword and sorcery. Mm. And so it, it, it was a way for us to nerd out and use all the material that we love to talk about, but never got, you know, all that time to talk about in class. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that that nerdiness is a key thing as well in that you know one of the ways in which we, we have been pitching the book is that it's for the people who maybe never got to study science fiction or horror or fantasy in a classroom or maybe they got to study speculative fiction just as a big umbrella maybe they didn't get to study it with someone who was like really sympathetic to the material who knew the material it is it is the nerdery I, I think that makes this different that makes us like yeah we love this and we want you to be writing this and we want to see more of this the idea that we're we're not just saying oh writing has to be this no writing is everything writing is whatever you want it to be and here are like 30 different ways that you can go about it initially and let's dig into them and let's get really really excited about them we yeah. might we might have gotten a little too excited once or twice just a little bit sometimes yeah, it's like that, yeah. <laughs> hence know, the jokes that got cut but. <laughs> also that's part of nerding out isn't it it's like you yeah. do get over excited so yeah <laughs> um and essential question spec pick for newbies is it only for newbies or, do you, or will seasoned writers get something out of this as well yeah i think so because you know there are certain subgenres that i've like never written in i've talked about i know about but i just haven't really gone okay i'm ready to do that now and so i'm sure there are a lot of other writers out there like me who basically stuck to you know, their, their wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. And they think, maybe I want to try to write Sword and Sorcery, or maybe I want to try to write Grimdark, or I want to try to write Psychological Horror, because yeah. I like watching it, or I like reading it, but I haven't tried to write it. Mm -hmm. And so it's also for, for those people who maybe also want to know a little bit more about the history of the stuff they have been writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and people who accidentally find themselves writing something, maybe the people who just were like, oh yeah, I'm going to write, I'm going to write a historical story, but now actually I'm writing historical fantasy, or the people who are going to like, oh yeah, I was writing certain sorcery, but now it's turned into body horror, or now it's turned into cosmic horror, or somehow it's like, oh, maybe I need to do a little bit more reading about that, maybe I need to find out more about that, the people who sort of have like let the writing guide them into interesting avenues that they might not have expected. They might pick up this book and they might say, yeah, okay, this is what I'm doing. And this is how I'm doing it. And here are some ideas that I can play around with. Because that is the beauty of speculative fiction at the end of the day, isn't it? That, <laughs> that you can just go in so many different areas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. And one thing that we did do, um, the book itself has an introduction. 
and we talk about you know what the book's going to do and we talk about theme because throughout the the whole book in in not quite every single section but in almost all the sections we'll have like an element spotlight or we'll talk about some general writing element mm. and so we do that in the introduction we do that in the sections and then in each each genre's introduction we talk about that genre and what it means and maybe how the world like deals with it deals with it that sounds it sounds like therapy so it's also we try to be really supportive because that was one thing that you know we had supportive people around us when we were learning how to write and then we in turn wanted to be supportive of our students who wanted to write science fiction fantasy horror and maybe were told that they shouldn't be writing it that it was just garbage which is baloney mm -hmm. and so we yeah so we try to be we try to put forth that really positive spin on things and that support and so you know, maybe you've been writing for a while and you're just kind of stuck and you're feeling kind of dull and you're feeling kind of blah. You pick up the book and you read about, you know, what science fiction does or what fantasy does or like all the myths about fantasy that we can throw in the sea. Mm. And you start to feel a little bit better about what you're doing. Awesome. Yeah. It's so very much the... Talk... Oh, yes, no, no, you keep going. That's oh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was just going to say that it's very much... It's supposed to be a. It's supposed to be a welcoming book. It's supposed. It's not about. It's not about gatekeeping. It's about blowing the gates wide open. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I said the other day uh, to someone that it's like it's like lowering the gangplank on the spaceship to like invite people on board and welcome them into Specfix. The idea here is that we're not we're not trying to say there's this subgenre and this subgenre. We're we're talking about the, the how porous they are. We're talking about the idea that you can move easily from one to the other to the other. It's not about it's not about rules. It's about it's about it's about the shapes of the subgenres, these kind of amorphous sort of shapes that you as a writer can play around with and you can make of them what you want to make of them. And it's us say, it's not us saying no, it has to be this thing. It's us saying that's a cool thing you're doing. Have you thought about doing this or have you thought about looking at it that way? Or have you thought about maybe spinning the thing around 180 degrees? Degrees and maybe combining it with another subgenre and see what happens. Yeah. We're, as I said, supposed to be encouraging. Awesome. Yeah, and, and throughout, as as if anybody who looks at the book, they'll see, you know, all of our like subheadings are all in bold, etc. But inside the block of the text, we very often we've said, go see, go see gothic horror for more about this idea, or go see, you know, um, steampunk or whatever, to show just how porous these are and how much things overlap. Yeah. And so there's a lot of cross referencing going on. Yeah, awesome. So let's talk about the subgenres. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to ask you to just sit and list out every subgenre that this book has covered because we want people to go and find out for themselves. But, you know, there are so many subgenres. You've already said that there's going to be a volume two that you've been sort of that one's not for this one, that could be for the next one. So, how did you make those decisions? What, what, how did you decide what made the cut for this first one? <laughs> Silence. Uh, <I> Silence. <laughs> <laughs> go for it now. Uh, I we looked we looked at the essentials and in some ways we didn't we didn't know that there was going to be a volume two uh, when we started to put this together so it was important for us to say what are the key things if you're writing if you're writing science fiction what do you need to know about you need to know about aliens you need to know about spaceships you need to know about robots if you're writing about fantasy what do you need to know about you need to know about sword and sorcery you need to know about fairy stories you need to know about grimdark you need to know about like these these key things and we we started to build out around that and we we're like yeah uh, what are some other kind of cool things things that we could say there. Tiffany mentioned big dumb objects earlier, which was very much my thing, which I was like, oh, actually, yeah. Can we can we do a whole chapter just on giant things in space? I mean, I guess we could. <laughs> and did. it fed back then into other into other sections. It's like, yeah, actually, that sort of relates to, to stuff that you see in, in, in cosmic horror. They, it, it relates to the feelings or the emotions that you generate in the reader doing, like, like reading that, that sort of like unknowability of things. You're like, oh, Okay, that's terrifying. Yes. And, and and in that way, we sort of, I won't say we, I won't say we stumbled through our initial creation of the of the table of contents, but we we sort of felt our way through it organically. We started with a couple of core things in each one and we built out from that. Hmm. Hmm. And, and we, we we got we got kind of stuck up in things need to be really organized. Um and I'm I tend to be kind of organized person in certain ways and so when we we got all these all these subgenres and all these things we wanted and then we had to make choices because we said the book can't be over x number of words each section can only be about x long and we need them to be even so we can't have like more science fiction than horror so we had to have 10 in each mm. which meant we had to cut a couple things and we had to move things around so time travel is in fantasy even though it's sometimes science fiction it's sometimes fantasy we put it there because we didn't have room for it in science fiction <laughs> so, 
we really ended up having to play with the table of contents to get it to work and to be organized. Mm -hmm. And so something like space opera didn't make the cut. And we realized as we were writing, we're like, we've mentioned space opera like three times and we didn't do it in this book. We have to do it in another book. So, and, yeah. and yeah, it's been, it's been interesting to try to figure out the table of contents for the second one, because mm -hmm. we think we figured it out, but then we keep coming up with things and we're saying, maybe we need to put that in there. <laughs> so after Easter, we're going to have to have a meeting and figure out, you know, what yeah, we really, we'll, we'll, we'll have a talk about that. The, yeah, well, the time travel one is a really good example, actually, a really good demonstration of that sort of organic fumbling we did initially with this in that, yeah, we, we had to move it to fantasy because there was no room in science fiction for it because somebody decided that, oh, this section on, on utopia and dystopia, this, this actually needs to be two sections. This needs to be a utopia section and a dystopia <laughs> section because they're completely different things. And uh, whoops, sorry, that was my bad. But I think we I think we landed it quite well in fantasy. There's a good joke there. Uh, people I think will appreciate why it has ended up in fantasy, but uh, they can they can find that out hopefully for themselves. Indeed, and I guess you know while you're wandering around Eastercon next week, if anyone says, "Hey, why didn't you do X subgenre?" You can go oh, that that would be a good one for the next yeah, one actually. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> we were already planning on it for volume two. Yeah. Um, let Let's talk personal preferences just for a moment. What what is your individually your favorite subgenre? Do you think whether that's your favorite to read, your most fun to write? Like, wh what is your favorites? I would guess Val's is big dumb objects and anything military space, like military science fiction. That's I'm going to guess his, and then he can guess mine. How's that? Yeah, okay, that's a good that, I would, I would yeah. guess that that would be his favorite Th too. Those would those would be close. Those would be close. Actually, I'm going to guess Tiffany's first, and then we can we can okay. see if we're right. I'm going to guess Tiffany's would be uh would be vampires, and 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 historical fantasy. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. I think you. I think you got mine totally correct. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> I I I know what you watch on TV. I know, yeah, I know what I know. you consume. That's, that's so that's yeah. I'm going to go watch Star Trek after this. I'm not going to lie to you. Guys. No, that's that's really? what I'm doing this evening. Hell surprise. <laughs> All right. What what about your least favorites? Like as writers, is there anything that you would just not touch? Oh man, what would I not touch? I've I so I like horror. Like I read Stephen King when I was like ten years old. I love mm. horror. I don't like watching it. I have a really hard time with visual stuff because I remember it too much, and then I'm scared to go to bed, and I'm a grown person. So certain like body horror, I. I don't know if I could write it because I would just think about it too much. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's that visceral, you know, yeah. in your imagination, putting it on the page. Yeah. No, I get that. <laughs> How about you, Val? Oh, I think, I think the one that I, I, I struggled with, we'll say aesthetically or imaginatively, whatever, whatever term we want to put on this, the most certainly when it was, we were researching the book was splatterpunk. And mm. I was like, I can, I can see the perspective here that when this is done right, this is, you know, this has an artistic rationale behind it. And mm. there is, there is some thought put into how this is breaking. It's that the punk aspect of the thing mm. is it's sort of like, let's smash the preconceptions and the notions and let's, let's do something that will shock people. Um, and, and when, when maybe it's done, less well it just becomes kind of torture porn and it's like oh okay this is so grotesque and awful and I, I I could not write this I could and I've written a couple of things that are that are somewhere between science fiction and body horror and I've written some things that I wrote a story once my father said yeah I just got a text message from my dad after he read it and he said yeah that made me that made me sick to my stomach and <laughs> and I've done a couple of things like that but full on on splatterpunk I thought ooh, this I think is beyond me to sort of make this artistically credible enough mm. I think I might I might leave that to other people mm. we both squick out really easy don't we yeah which is weird because we teach this stuff you know and sometimes we will have we will have students come to the classroom and they'll write something that will freak out everybody in the room with how brilliantly squishy and and, and sort of grotesque it is and you'll be like that's kind of amazing I I, <laughs> I I never want to read that ever again I'm just yeah I'm just going to give you I'm just going to give you a high mark right now an a. <laughs> yeah yeah you get an a well done I'm just gonna just come get, get some air now yeah and take that away from me please yeah <laughs> Awesome. Um, the reason I asked about your favorites, your least favorites is, you know, uh, often out there in writing land, particularly in places like, you know, mainstream writing or literary worlds and that sort of thing. We hear people say things like, 
genre as a marketing construct or dismissive things about genre writing, which you've already touched on. Um, why do you think it's important to identify a genre for your writing or do you think it is? Well, so, okay. So you want to be a writer, which means you want to be read and which means you have to get published, right? And if you're going to go traditional publishing or even small press publishing, you need to know what context you're in so that the people who are buying your your manuscript can sell it so they know where to put it in a bookstore. I mean, it comes down to like basic money in that case. Mm. But with science fiction, fantasy, and horror, what's so interesting about them is that they're not so much genres as modes, and there's this continuing conversation that's been going on for decades inside them. And, you know, if you if you, you don't have to know everything. Nobody has time to read everything ever in science fiction, fantasy, or horror. I mean, I don't have time for that. Mm. But if you don't really know what's been going on, like in your little part of the world for the past like five, 10 years, you're kind of missing out on where you're going to be taking that subgenre next, mm. basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think, Val? I, I, I was thinking, I was thinking about this earlier, actually, the whole question about the people being dismissive. It's, it's just a marketing construct. And, and I was thinking, yeah, they've got it completely wrong. And I, I started thinking of, sorry, I'm about to go off on my weird tangents now. Hello. I started You do a tangent? I, what? No. no. Uh, uh, I was thinking of I was thinking of genres more as they're more like rivers in a way. In that in that that's a river and that's a river and that's a river. Yeah, sure, they're all rivers, but they're all individual and unique. They've all got their own currents. They've all got their own hazards. They've all got their own pleasures. They've all they've all got their own identity and their mood and their own atmosphere. They're completely different things. Although once you step back far enough, you'd be like, oh yeah, that's a river and that's a river and that's a river. But you have to zone in on them, and they're completely different experiences. And in that way, I think we need to think. We need to think of of subgenres more in that way of having their own identity rather than these these monolithic sort of blocks. Mm. Yeah, I think especially in as you say speculative fiction because just talking that that discussion earlier about horror, you've got the splatterpunk and then you've got the gothic, and they yeah. could not be more different. Uh, you know, a, a gothic fan is going to balk at, at a splatterpunk, mm. and likewise, the splatterpunk will think it's really boring to you know damsels in distress and decay and all of this sort of thing um yeah so no I I, I appreciate where you're coming from with that and I, I totally agree with uh with the, I love that river analogy you know, tributaries and hazards and you know whatever and, and sometimes they're in flood and sometimes they go dry and that's I mean that's essentially we're in a we're in a vampire phase now we're in a we're in a zombie phase now we're in a mermaid phase now and yeah. they just they ebb and flow I think we're talking about mermaids for 10 years and it still hasn't happened. I'm waiting for mermaids. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> we're witches so, at the moment, are we? We're in witch lit time. Oh, we're oh, in huge witch land time. I that lately. Yeah, witch lit. I thought that was a cool term. Which yeah. makes, it makes sense if you look at the political landscape of... Yeah. Right. Oh, so, yeah. Don't get me started on the political landscape. But yeah, you look at what's happening with people losing any control, especially women losing control yeah. of their own bodies. Mm. Witch lit is in because yeah. that is one place you can have some of your power back. Yeah, and that's such oh, that, <laughs> absolutely. That's another one of the great things about speculative fiction is it is so reflective of what's going on at the time. So, like you say, we could talk about this for ages, but I need to let you get back on with your day. So I will ask ask you a couple more questions. Um, the obvious one, the one that everybody hates when they've released a book. Why should those listening, watching, reading this go and pick up a copy of Spec Fic for newbies? Who wants to go first? Sal, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first on that. Uh, because because maybe you can't afford to go to university. Maybe you can go to university and your professors are only saying, oh, we're just going to do serious literature about white people in their kitchens getting divorced. Maybe you want to learn about the history, the really specific, very rich, vibrant history of science fiction or horror and fantasy and how far back it goes and the key texts and the key themes and the sort of the ideas that are percolating there under the surface and how much they have influenced society and society has influenced those in turn and back and forth. Maybe you want to know more about this and you haven't had a chance to do it. Or maybe you maybe you do get to study this in, in, in university or school or, or, or maybe maybe your instructor has been perhaps not as nerdy or into it as we are. This is a really exciting opportunity for you to see what it's like to what it's like to study on one hand with us, hello, uh, and on the other hand to study with people who are really sympathetic to the individual demands and the individual currents. So go back to that river analogy, the individual streams that contribute to this this enormously vibrant type of literature. The idea that there's only one type of literature, there's only serious proper writing, is completely and utterly dismissed by Specfic for newbies. Specfic for newbies is saying 
saying to you, here, I'm giving you permission to write these amazing stories about witches or vampires or, or aliens or robots or beings from beyond space time. We're telling you that these are stories that are important. Here's how you start. Here's how you go about doing it. Here's a copy of the book. Awesome. Anything to add to today? <laughs> How would you boil that down to a bumper sticker? Um, we're nerds, uh, mm -hmm. dyed in the wool nerds, and this is where we get to like nerd out and be, you know, we both have PhDs where we were both, I was an academic for a long time, Val's still an academic, and sometimes that can be a little bit off-putting, but this is us letting our freak flags fly, basically, and mm -hmm. we're fully diving into the stuff that we love to do and giving everybody permission to totally do the same thing, you know, it, like let your, let your nerd out, go for yeah. it. You don't have to write about divorce and adultery and murder and all the really boring real life stuff. Blech. Write yeah. about tentacles and explosions and aliens and all the cool crap. And put it in space and, and everyone's fine. Well, and Val will still, be really happy. Oh, it yeah. still <laughs> means something though. And that's yeah. what's I think really important about science fiction, fantasy and horror is, yeah, it's got all this cool stuff we love, but it's still about us. It's about us now and it means something. It's just a little bit hidden. And so if you're writing in these genres, you're kind of like, not part of a secret club because I don't want it to sound exclusive, but you're kind of part of this thing saying, oh, I could totally write about a vampire, but it means something that's not just about a vampire. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I think as well that that notion of people think, oh, it's a fantasy story. It must be set, you know, thousands of years ago, or it's a science fiction story. It must be set thousands of years in the future. It's like, no, it's it's not. These are stories about now. Mm -hmm. And and in that way, Spec Fit for Newbies is a way of telling people, this is how you tell stories about now. This is how you tell stories about, about queer identity or trans identity. This is how you tell stories about, about the dystopian, capitalist, neoliberal nonsense we find ourselves in nowadays. This is how you tell stories about, about the struggles that people are genuinely engaged in now. You just put a little sheen on it it's like the same way everyone everyone thinks star trek in the 60s was all william shatner making out with like green aliens but it was it was right. about race relations in 1960s america it was just sort of held off at that slight remove so that the serious people couldn't couldn't tell what was actually being told <laughs> in the story and that's that's what we're trying to do here we're trying to give people permission to do that yeah and a decoder ring yeah awesome um, anything else you'd like to say, share, any final thoughts on speculative fiction or spec fic for newbies before we say goodbye for the day? Embrace it. Embrace spec fic. Embrace whatever genre you're in. Buy the book, obviously. obviously. Like, that's what we want to talk about, <laughs> buying the book. Um, and if you have ideas for something you think that we wouldn't think of to put in book two, by all means, tweet it at us and we'll see if it's in the list or not. Yeah, absolutely do that. Uh, all I will say to, to, to wrap up on my end is that we had an absolute blast writing this. This was an extraordinary amount of fun to put together. And I really, really hope that people will, they'll find it useful, I hope, but I really hope that they'll also, they'll also really enjoy reading it and they'll feel like some of the love that we have for these genres and these subgenres, like oozing out of the page in a really sort of weird, disturbing way. And that's another subgenre. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome stuff. All right, Tiffany Val, thank you so much for your your time uh, this uh, lovely afternoon in UK. Um, you've seen the light playing on my face as we have been talking. Apologies for slight darkness at times, um, but thank you. And everybody, go out and get Specfic for newbies. We'll put all the details in whatever page it is you are watching, reading, listening to this. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>